Hey y'all, it's Katie. Welcome back to From My Vanity. Today we have another monthly makeup review for April. Before I do dive in though, I do want to clarify that this inspiration for this series came from Samantha March. I know I don't always say that in the video, but I do always link her below in my description box. But yeah, I was just holding my son. He's now sleeping, so we're going to get right into this makeup monthly review for April. For usual, let's first dive into the products that were a total dud fail for me. First up was Hard Candy's Velvet Mousse Matte Lip Color. I've actually had this in my collection for a while and just never got around to trying it. So I put it in my shop, my stash for this past month and actually Hard Candy sent me a little PR uh, bag a couple weeks ago and also included two of these exact type of lipsticks. So I was like, I definitely need to give this a try. So I tried it hated it. So you know when matte liquid lipsticks were first becoming popular and they were that really thick, very uncomfortable, and then when it wore away it would just like patch and chunk off because it was so thick but you couldn't layer anything else over it because it was so thick. That's what this is. It is not comfortable. It is not flattering. It does not wear well. And I mean, ugh, I did not like it. So wanting to give it the benefit of the doubt because I did get this from a friend. So I wasn't sure how old it was. I was like, let me try one of the new ones. Maybe this is just going bad. Nope. Same story. So I also tried Lime Crimes. Uh, this is their metallic liquid lipstick. So I don't typically like metallic liquid lipsticks. Let me just put that out there. The only ones that I do like is from Smashbox because it is a very fine metallic and it's very pigmented. Like the color is very pigmented. So I don't mind those and I do wear them on occasion. This was just incredibly sheer and when I was trying to put it on, it looked too streaky and it was too patchy. So I tried topping it with you know, like on top of another liquid lipstick and it got too thick. I gave it probably three tries and after the third one I just took it off right away because I was like meh I don't like it. So next I was really sad to have to put this in this category but it's a Smashbox Always On Liquid Eyeliner. I really 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 wanted to like this. Not only is the packaging super cool but I like Smashbox. I like their Always On line so I was really hoping to like this and also it's a shake it up kind of pen which is a kind I like. For the first couple uses it was fine you know it was like a felt tip for me, felt tips, it's a little harder to get a very precise and kind of like a wing that disappears and fades away than nothing. I can achieve that better with a brush tip pen. So, you know, it was still a little difficult. It wasn't terrible, but it was a little tricky, but I made it work. It was fine. It was very pigmented, very black. I had no problems. And then one day I like used it over a liquid liner that I already sat down. It was a colored liquid liner that I put down and then I changed my mind. I didn't like how it looked, so I went to put this on, over on top. And it started like picking up the product that I had put down. And so I was like, well, shoot, maybe it just doesn't like, you know, going on top of thicker liquid liners type product. So I grabbed a different one and finished my look. The next day I went to grab this and it, it was just over top of regular shadow. But now if you go once, you can't go back over it to try to like fill it in because it will pick up the product. So I wiped it several times trying to get any kind of like maybe hard liner from that time I did it before off and it still does that. So I have no idea if I ruined it by going over it or if it was just inevitable like as you use it, like the product, maybe the actual liquid, black liquid liner starts to cake onto here and that's why it's happening. But either way, I can't use this. I don't like using it because it does that no matter what I do. Even if I wanna do the simplest little wing, it really only works for just lining my lash line right now. So for that reason, I can't recommend it. And I can't even tell you if it's my fault that I ruined it or if it's just uh, something that will happen over time as you use it. So I am very sorry that I can't give you guys more info. So but next I have a sponge and this is from Japanesque. It reminds me of the Jessie's Girl sponge, which I also reviewed here months ago in a, a monthly makeup review. I'll leave it linked up here. But I didn't like it because it, I felt like it held on to too much water and then watered down my makeup way too much. And it was kind of the same story with this. It gets really large. It's very nice and soft. It blends in very nicely, but I felt like it just was putting too much water on my face. And so it was making things splotchy. I don't like it and I don't foresee myself continuing to use it. This was a big dud for me. Then last up, I kind of struggled if I should put this in the fail or just the okay category. But I'm going to put it in a fail because these are fails for me. So, this product is a fail for me. <laughs> I tried to like it, you guys. I really tried. But I just, I think the thing with Bad Habit eyeshadows, especially their mattes, if you are someone who just takes one, maybe two tops 
of sh matte shades into your crease or just working it onto your eye, outer corner, that kind of thing, I think you will love the looks that you get from this. I don't think you'll have too many issues. My issue is I like to add a lot of color. So I like to use a color in the crease. I like to use a color kind of like on my outer corner, then one more like specifically on my outer corner to really deepen it up. I might like to add a little bit more color above my crease just to make another color pop. And when I would try it with this, things would get so patchy. It would get so sheared out. Like shadows would skip. The color wouldn't adhere. It just doesn't work. And I had a couple people tell me in my um, last video of uh, makeup brands I tried to love, and I mentioned Bad Habit. They said, well, just make sure you use a primer and it's okay. I use a primer anytime I do an eye look because my lids are just so oily. My eye looks will crease like within an hour if I don't. So I always use an eyeshadow primer. But for shadows that need a little bit more help, I do go on with a second primer. So for example, I'll put my Lorac behind the scenes down, let it dry a bit, then I'll go on top of it with like a uh, Smashbox lid primer, which is a bit more colored, a bit thicker, and kind of helps color stick if it needs that help. And I tried that several times, and it's just, it didn't, it just doesn't work. This shade, which I understand it was supposed to be like a press glitter, and I have no idea if it was just, if it, it was also a horrible shade in the Huda Beauty, because this is supposed to be a, a dupe for the Huda Beauty one, but it is horrible. I put it on my eyes, and I had to go take eye makeup remover and remove it from my eyes. That's how bad it was. And you guys, I'm someone who, even if an eye look turns out terrible, nine times out of 10, I mean, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, I just wear it anyway. But this was so bad, I went and took it off. The deal was that I put this on, and it was so thick that when I opened my eyes, it almost like changed the shape of my eye because it was so thick and stiff, I couldn't properly open my eyes. So, I mean, the shimmers, the other shimmers that aren't supposed to be like this pressed glitter formula are okay, they're decent. I have to use them with my fingers so I can like wipe them on because if I try to use a brush to swipe them on, it gets too thick again. But yeah, that's my issue with bad habit. I don't like it, it's in my fail category. So before we move on to my okay category, Let's talk about these really, really quick. These are the Ardell Magnetic Lashes. Now, I had asked a poll on Instagram saying, what do you guys want to see? Just a mention in my makeup monthly review or a dedicated video telling you guys about my experience. And the results were almost 50-50. So I'm going to mention it here and you guys tell me here, what would you want me to do a follow-up video kind of explaining everything that I went through because I tried a lot of stuff. I had a lot of experiences with this guy. Overall, I love the concept. I am able to put them on, like I, I am able to get them on and they can stay on. My deal is that they start to slide down my lashes and that's not cute. If you've been able to get these to work and not have them slide down your lashes, let me know because I would love for these to be able to work. I heard a lot of people say that the accents are nicer, so I'm trying not to ramble here and be too scattered, but let me know if you want to see a dedicated video of this, but also let me know if you'd like me to review the accent lashes. I heard a few people saying that those apply better, they stay on better, they're easier to put on. I just didn't get them because I thought it would look weird. I just didn't like the look of accent lashes because then I feel like the center here looks funny. Anyway, all that to say, let me know. I'll put a poll here, but if you have more advice, more thoughts that you want to share with me, just let me know in a comment, but I'm very torn with these because I love the concept with my watery eyes. They didn't, these didn't make my wa eyes water. They were a little sensitive, like I could tell I had lashes on, but my eyes never watered, so that was a plus, but anyway. I just, I'm very torn with it. All right, let's move on to the OK products. First, we have the e.l.f. and Heart Defender, is it Defender? Defenser um, Highlighter Palette, or Trio, not palette, sorry. It's in Coffee and Cream, and this is with Heart, uh, that's Heart here on YouTube. I used to uh, be subscribed to her. My issue with this and why it's not like a favorite of mine is because I felt like if I just used this, it was too white on my skin, and if I just used this, it was too dark. So the way that I used, the only way I could use it and like enjoy and like how it looked on my face was if I mixed them both together. But besides that, it's really nice. It works really well. It looks really pretty on the skin. Nothing too chunky. It's very smooth looking on the skin. Let's see. Just kind of do it messily. Gives a really nice reflection and stuff like that, but I just find that I'm not reaching for it. I know this is going to be a highlighter that I have to not make myself, but I have to make a point of like, let me use that for this this next month and use it, or I'm just gonna skip over it for a highlighter that's a one and done, I don't need to swirl it kind of thing, so. I also tried the Elf Ann Christian Soriano Liquid Lipstick. This is in Fuchsia. I like it, it looks really nice. It's a little bit 
sheer like I think it'd be good to put a lip liner down but I just never bother my issue is if you the minute you start eating it comes off I'm gonna be holding on to this because it'll be a nice one if I need this shade for like a look I'm doing but it's not one that I would depend on if I was going out and about and I knew I was gonna be like drinking it was graceful and that it didn't like chunk or flake off but it's just it doesn't hold up well for me next I have a models own liquid lipstick and candy cane and I wore this in a video recently I can't remember um, I'll have it linked below if you want to see what it looks like on me but I really do like it it's very comfortable very light very sheer on my lips I'm not sheer but like it's very thin formula that's what the word I'm looking for it's a very thin formula so very comfortable but it's very opaque it's not sheer it's very opaque goes on one coat and it does last pretty decent it lasts a little bit better than the elf one but it will start to wear down if you start kind of eating and drinking a bunch I wouldn't wear this to go out on a date dinner or date with my husband put it that way but if I was going out for like two three hours to hang out with friends or something I would wear this because I'd be confident it wouldn't like totally leave my lips by the time I came home if I was just like drinking coffee or something like that. So I thought this was pretty good. It just was, didn't wow me and wasn't a favorite of mine because it wasn't as long wearing as I would have liked it to be. I also got the e.l.f. and Christian Soriano eyeshadow palette. Um, packaging here is really, really nice. They did a very good job. It's a, a magnetic closure there, so it's very nice, very smooth, very secure, like it wouldn't accidentally open on you. Um, and it also has a actually decent brush. This is a nice palette, but for the price, I would say not worth it. Um, one of them being is that this shade and this shade, honestly, like let me swatch it for you. You really, let's see can't there is the, like the tiniest bit of a difference one's a little more white and one's a little more champagne -y. they're both shimmery though and just to me when I was using this I was like why did you give us two almost identical shades I would have much rather have had a different color it's nice it's a little bit pricey for me for what you get but if you see this palette and you like these pops of colors sure especially if you I do like like I said the packaging is really nice but I just wish they would have given more variety because for me, I find myself only thinking to reach for this if I want that green. And that's a lot of money to spend for a green. And then we have the e.l.f. Mad for Matte Jewel Pop Palette. These are a little tricky to open, I will say that. This is what I have on my eyes today, and it's nice. I just struggle using these brighter shades. And maybe it's because I am such a newbie when it comes to just using like intense color. Like I like to play with color, but usually it's like a pop of color. So I tried to use this, and I used this blue, purple, and pink two days trying to make it work. I struggled with it to show up nice and pigmented and I felt like I really had to pack it on and pack it on and pack it on to get that color, but I would get that vibrant color. But then as the day wore away, I was not only getting fallout from the color on my like on my face, but also it was wearing away and I could kind of see it wearing away. Again, I did my uh, double priming method to see if that would help. It was the same story. Um, I tried setting my primer before I used this. I tried not setting my primer before I used this. Neither way really did much. So I'm putting in my okay because it's not going to be a total fail because I feel like I will reach for this when I want that pop of color. And I love having these more colorful matte shadows because I feel like that's always a staple if you want to explore with color to have matte eyeshadows to use. Um, Angelica did a review, or she used this in a, a look, I know. I don't know if she said it was a review, but she used it and she said it was decent. She thought it was nice. So I'll link that down below too just to give you a second opinion from someone who actually uses color efficiently because maybe I just don't know how to use it. But for me, it doesn't hold up as long as I would like it to. Again, keep in mind, I have very oily eyelids, so maybe that's just, it's just me. All right, we're moving right along. Let's talk about some favorites. First up is this Flower Beauty Blush in Peach Primrose. This is extremely pigmented, extremely soft. It gives you the color. It's just, it takes no work to build this up. It wears very well on this. I've been wearing it a lot, and I really like it. It holds up well, blends beautifully, so if I kind of put on too much, I can go with another brush and very easily blend it out. I thought this was a fantastic blush and I would highly recommend it. Next, I have Pixi Liquid Lipsticks and I honestly feel bad because I think the video I posted last week at this point, I was kind of talking about how there's nothing from Pixi that I love and can like be head over heels for, like I don't get the hype from that brand. And keep in mind, I recorded that earlier this month. I think I finally found the product that I can actually say yes, Pixi did an awesome job. I'm hyped for this product. It is phenomenal. I recommend it. They're extremely comfortable. They uh, don't, you don't notice them on your lips. They don't accentuate the lines in my lips or the dryness of my lips, um, but they also wear away gracefully. I would highly recommend these because 
they're pretty darn awesome. So two more products to go. Let's first talk about these in this little uh, magnetic palette from Makeup Geek. I'm talking specifically about these six on the side here. They are from Sydney Grace and they are phenomenal. Um, Sydney Grace is a very new brand to me. I purchased these six, wanted to see if they duped the um, subculture palette. They are very smooth, very pigmented. They take no work to blend up. I don't think the colors are dupes enough for it to replace my subculture palette. Like I love the green and the yellow in the subculture and these two shades just aren't close enough to give me the looks that I, I reach for from that palette in this palette, if that makes sense. I'll have it linked down below and I'll list out each of the shades just to save time here that I own. But as I said, these six here are only from Sydney Grace Co. The two in the middle are Makeup Geeks, which are amazing as well. Um, they, I would say, are dupes or better than the two shades in the subculture. This is Karma and then this is, what, Fireball? Legend. Um, and they're by far easier, a lot prettier than the one in the subculture. But yeah, I'm really impressed with Sydney Grace and I definitely want to try some more. They're a little dusty, they're a little powdery, so keep that in mind if that's something you don't like, but that doesn't bother me at all because the powderiness is pigmented and that's what I like. I don't like when it's powdery and just poof, like puffs away and there's no pigment. These are pigmented and I highly recommend you check them out and I definitely want to try more from this company because these are fantastic. This is a fantastic formula. Then Perfusion sent me their Mixed Metals Peach Palette and this baby is huge. Like you see nearly as big as my head. They give you a huge mirror which I thought, think is fantastic and then the actual pans are huge. <laughs> Can I say huge anymore? Uh, let me just go ahead and show you as a comparison. Here's a Makeup Geeks. So you see that. They smell this palette kind of smells, is it chocolate? I would say it's peach if that's what they were going for, but it's a very nice smell. And the quality in here is very, very nice. Perfusion is a more affordable brand, so I think it's definitely one you should check out. They're all nicely pigmented, they blend well, they build up easily. If there's one dot in this palette, it's static up here. Now this looks like a matte, it probably looks matte from here, but it's actually got glitter in it, but the glitter doesn't show up. I used it several times and it just kind of looked like a matte peach shade, which honestly was my preference and I was fine with. Oh, by the way, I've been putting pictures in these videos and it's something I'm gonna start doing for eyeshadow palettes specifically. Um, when I do looks with them, I'm going to save them because I do them and I post them and share them every day on my Snapchat and Instagram. So if that's helpful for you guys, definitely let me know that and I will continue to do it. I know I don't have a lot of different looks for each palette because I didn't think to do that at the beginning but from now on every look that I do testing these palettes I'm gonna save and include in here and so you should get almost a month's worth of eye, of eye looks in these videos but let me know if you like that because I'm excited to start doing that uh, but anyway overall I think Perfusion has a really nice uh, just formula going for them right now and this has made me curious and so excited to try the other products that they've sent me so I'm excited and honestly the looks that I created from this look, I liked them all and I thought they were all really pretty. I, I like this palette. What can I say? I like it, I recommend it, and I thought it was fantastic. So there you have it. That's my monthly makeup review for April. I always love to do these monthly wrap-up videos. I really love testing these products out throughout the month and kind of making my notes and deciding uh, you know, what I'm gonna share and feature in these monthly makeup reviews but yeah thank you so much i love you guys i hope you guys have a fantastic day i hope you guys had a great april thank you so much for watching and i will see you very soon in my next one bye guys